Today is the day, lads. Today is the day I'm going to get Sam Monk on camera. He has agreed to show us around the yard, have a look at the workshops and all that kind of crack. Um, it's quite enough now, it's between silage and maize, so there's a good few lads around the yard doing maintenance, washing, all that crack. So, should be interesting. Let's go. There's machine ready for maize. Right, Sam. Don't think you're getting away now with just this interview. This is just a quick one, just right. a tour around. Garrett is still going to nab you when he comes over, but uh, it's nice to get you on camera anyway. Yeah, so you come I'm into the yard. Sure about that. This the first thing you're going to see is the office and the sign. That's right. And is this your office as well, or is it just the girls working here? No, this is my office as well, and Billy, the manager. So we all work out of here. Yeah. That better not be on my friend. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so fun. <laughs> if, someone, if someone wants a job here, what do they have to do? What's the best way to contact you? Uh, so we're always looking for skilled operators, but when we're doing grass and looking for grass, we usually open up in about April. Um, this year it'll be an online application. Uh, all our jobs go up through our Facebook page. We found that's probably the most effective mode. Um, and then we'll advise what jobs we're opening and then there'll be a link. They're only going to click on the link, um, fill in the form. Um, we appreciate the hundreds and hundreds of messages which I'm trying to get back to everyone since your last video. Um, we're, we're pretty full for maize at the moment but yeah we will be looking for some great operators for the up and coming grass season. And if people need help with Kind of the visa or anything, you help out with that as well? Yeah, yeah, look, if they send a message and they tell me what they don't know, like what they need, I'm happy to send the info. Um, majority of the guys out of Ireland are 417 holiday makers visa. Um, very simple visa to do, but yeah, drop me a message and I'm happy to give you the info and we can get you get you the help. What if, say, if someone is here in Australia already with maybe a year, nearly a year and their visa is nearly up and they want to go for the next? The second year visa like you yep. can sort that as well and yeah so look i do a lot of visas for the boys when they're here um the main thing that the guys need to understand is when they're in their first year make sure that they do their 88 days so their regional work so if they're working for an employer make sure that they check that they qualify for the regional we've had quite a few boys that just didn't quite meet the criteria um, and there's nothing we can do so if you've done your whole year and you've run out of time and you haven't done your 88 days there's no way to get a second visa yeah but working here does count towards your Correct. regional life. all the agricultural and regional vic add to your regional count yeah 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 this this hat is fairly short i could do the new one please so you're enjoying your time yeah it's nice are you adjustable? Uh, yeah, trucker cap. Is that that one? Yeah. There you go. Oh, look at that. Look at the shine off us. Oh, she's mint. <laughs> Come on, we go do this farm tour. Absolutely not. No, no. <laughs> not all I'm eating. And Andrea, what, what is your position within this company? <laughs> what do I do? I do a bit of everything. Do you pay the wages? I do. Oh, that's the most important job. <laughs> I know you're filming me while I'm eating, so that's, <laughs> so that's great. Pretty hard when I eat all the time, I suppose. <laughs> um, so yes, I do a bit of everything. Pay the wages. Design the calendar? Kind of. Oh yeah, do a bit of that. Did you do the calendar in the end? Yeah, it's here. Oh, I didn't see it. I'll get you. A, oh yeah, you've got a thing. We've got a bag for you. So yes, now you'll get a copy of the calendar. So how long have you got left here, Kian? I don't know. Till you get sick of me, I suppose. No, oh, no, it's all good. As long as you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, that's fair. There's enough going on, isn't there? Yeah, that's nice and quiet now, but that won't last too long. No, it's not quiet in here. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll leave it there. I'll go and annoy the lads up in the air. Roger. Thank you very much. Good on you, mate. So in here is all our pit silage cover. We supply the cover on all of our jobs. Our net wrap and our round bale silage wrap. Pretty boring sort of shed, this one. So the farmer doesn't ever have to Organised plastic or anything or wrap, Certain it's all... Certain farmers do, but most of our pit silage stuff we supply the cover and at the end of the job turn up with a trailer. Um, lots of jobs we help cover on, but the farmer always helps as well. 
Are all them rolls wrapped the same size? Like you build the stack to a certain width? Depends That's the way it on works the job. The, the buns, isn't it? Yeah, it just depends on the job. So those covers there are 18.3 meters by 250 meter rolls. Yeah. Um, but lots of stacks we you know, could build at 40 meters wide, depending on the size of the job and the acreage. And do you go for bigger plastic then, or do you just double up? No, we just cover crossways then. That's the widest plastic we supply oh, is 18.3. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just the woman I was looking for. Hi. I need someone to do an interview. I need to do an old, you know, a tour of the workshop, like, and you're, you look like you're doing workshop stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me that's not recording me right now. <laughs> what you doing? Doing trailers. You what? In the trailer shed. Are you fixing, like? Taking the bearings off the back wheels, yeah. I'll have to get you, I'll definitely have to get that in video now. Why? Can you get it me? <laughs> so, over here is just our parking shed. Loaders and forage harvesters go in here. Um, anything and anything can be put in here, really. It's just for storage? Just a storage shed, that's all, before it comes down into the workshop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Aaron? Aaron has to look busy now. Aaron has to look very busy. <laughs> Aaron's always busy. So this is all our chopper maintenance is done in here. Um, spare parts for the choppers are kept in here. And we try and segregate it to the rest of the stuff so there's no confusion. Um, Tommy, one of our main guys here, he looks after all the spare parts and this is his shed, I would call it, uh, along with the other boys. But he tries to keep it organised for us so all the forage harvester maintenance is done in here. So at the minute now they're putting on the longer shoots for maize and all that at stuff. At the moment, yeah, putting on the longer spout extensions for the 10 and the 12 row fronts. Um, processors in and also full maintenance and service on the harvesters. Lovely so job. Up around here. New 12 row corn front, they're just getting ready to go. They're the two 990s and the 970 are the first ones that'll be out. Um, and the fourth 990 is still to come in. So, oh yeah, yeah. Yep. So while you run at maize, five choppers or four choppers of maize? It just depends on the season, but we've got the capabilities of running all nine forage harvesters. Our plan would be to run four to five, yeah, depending yeah. on the season. Yeah. Yep. So. Get your position there now. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Huh? Stop there now. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Right, so what's the crack with getting the harvesters ready for, uh, for maize? They're all Pulled into this paddock here and blown down. We get all washed up, brought into the workshop. Feeder housings are pulled off them, bearings done. And we get the processors into them. All new belts and put the longer spout extension on it for the 12 row maze head. And yeah, so you, do you just put a piece into the spout or is it a whole new spout? It's just a couple of extensions. So there's three extensions in that one. Yeah. So just for the 12 row head, so we can clear the head for the trailers and that, but yeah. Pretty much. This machine didn't need too much work, she's a new machine, so. And that's a brand new maze header? Uh, she's brand new, she's got a little bit, I'd say she's got 100 acres of whole crop this year, that was it. So, we'll put the lifters back onto it now, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, in here is the fast tracks, you could call it, and the Smith trailers. We do all the maintenance on them in here. Uh, we built the shed before we brought the trucks or trailers, so as you can see, it's not big enough, but same thing with these, they do a lot of Ks. Um, these trailers, every grass season, do about a thousand hours. Yeah. And then they'll probably do seven to 800 hours in May. So wheel bearings, looks like we go overboard on the maintenance, um, but we don't, we go through everything. We're a long way from home to break down. So wheel bearings, bushes, pins, um, and yeah, put the trailers to the test in this country. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, these boys are doing bushes over here and rocker boxes. Um, just general maintenance, really. So, yeah. We're working hard or hardly working, huh? Just doing bits, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, this is just another storage shed um, to park machines in. Um, these have just got the round balers and corn planter and just little things like that that we put in here. It's nothing specific that goes in here. It's just whatever's free. Yeah, yeah. So, so if I'm correct, there's 18 fast tracks in fleet. There's 18 fast tracks now, yep. How many fence? Uh, 30. And how many John Deere's? 25. And Do you have a one class? class. Yeah. The original. A Renault? Yes, that's what it is, yeah, something like that. No, it's not a bad tractor overall. Yeah. 
It's a lot of tractors. It's a lot of tractors. <laughs> a lot of maintenance. So. It's a lot, a lot of space for parking even to mind maintenance. Yeah, the plan is not to have them all home at once. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Um, this yeah. is probably like, this time of year is when most of them are around, I suppose, is it? Yeah, January would be our quietest month, I would have thought, and then for the summer, and then coming into sort of July, August can be quiet, but we normally start silage late August, depending yeah, on yeah, the year. Yeah. And I'm looking for There's allegations going around about a bit of cheating at the Chopper Derby there a few weeks ago. Did you let me say about that? Yeah, Steve McIntyre is just jealous that his name <laughs> 90's not fit. That's all I have to say. Like, there might be video evidence now of someone lifting the header and leaving a half sword behind him. There's definitely no video evidence. Oh, I don't know about that now. 100%. A man's just jealous because we is we name 10, he overtook his name 90. <laughs> <laughs> so you reckon uh, there's definitely no drone evidence of it? Definitely no drone evidence. <laughs> if you go back and look at the footage, that 970 was hopping. <laughs> And the header was definitely on the ground. Oh, 100%. <laughs> GoPro evidence. <laughs> what do you reckon, Tommy? Oh, I don't know. I don't play with shop. <laughs> You're I don't, I don't, I don't play with shop, thank God. <laughs> yeah, I was asking you. Aaron there about the, the Chopper Derby oh. and the allegations that he lifted the head. I have to go here. <laughs> so, in here's our new workshop. Uh, it's our main workshop. Um, Got an overhead crane going in it very shortly, as you can see all the beams and that for it. So, boys are just getting this John Deere ready to go and start on the laser bucket next week. That will be the biggest tractor in the fleet. Ah, uh, yeah, biggest horsepower, 570. 570. Yep. So, and that'll be on a laser bucket for the next six, seven months. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yep. yeah. So that's what that that tractor was brought to do that work, but it's ended up on a Vatostat top down for the spring. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just because it was such a wet season, we didn't have much bucket work. Yeah, so I haven't seen any bucket work yet, but how many buckets is there? We've got three buckets, two KTEX and a J&R. Yeah. And then JCB loaders, the boys are getting ready in here, once again for May's, the 435s. Yeah, I see JCB are actually here today doing a bit of service work, are they? Yeah, JCB are, yeah. A few yeah. warranty and upgrades, so. Yeah. Martin van der Handlen, are you still here on the, on the holiday visa? Yeah, yeah still here. <laughs> I'll blur out your face, so. Nice. But uh, how do you call it? The, the little square things the in pix front of pixelated. it? Pixelated. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because of the, all the taxes and everything. <laughs> so this bay here is for the trucks. Um, as you can see, it's pretty busy in here at the minute, so it's not the tidiest, but this is all, all our truck side of the business is done here, or anything that's got to go over the pit, really. And how many trucks are in the fleet? Uh, we've got five B-doubles, carting grain and hay, uh, and then two on floats, moving machinery. Um, and then our silage trucks as well, plus two truck and dogs carting gravel. Oh, yeah, yeah. For the earth moving side. Compost spreaders just getting maintenance. Um, so we've got four of those Bergamans. Um, they're getting rebuilt. They're a very busy machine. Um, they work nearly 12 months of the year here. As you can see, there's one out over there, uh, ready to go. And those two are heading out next week. Same thing again, maintenance on Smith trailers and just so obviously when, when the other, the trailer shed as they call it is full, they would spill into here as well? Yeah, spill into here, depending like, it's a busy time, you know, there's 18 Smiths to service this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> you know, some of them take a day, some of them take two or three days to get ready. Yeah, yeah. So, like I see you have your signs up on the back wall there, your different yeah, service that, that space. Yeah, uh, that was a bit of an idea of mine, but hasn't quite Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that really works like it's... <laughs> no, it hasn't, but it, it looks good It's whatever anyway. need, needs maintenance on the day. And that, that's exactly right. It's whatever's got to keep us in the paddock. It looks professional though. It looks, looks professional. <laughs> Um, as you come down here, same thing, just a Volvo truck getting a diff dump. So that's, a, that's solely for silage? That that's truck, all that truck it? does, it just draws silage. Yep. Um, yeah, front diff going in that one. And it's again, we've got Luke here, he's uh, getting another tractor ready for the buckets. Putting the jewels on it, it's come off a strip till, and then it'll go on the bucket for the rest of the season now. Needs a wash. Um, but other than that, it's all Trimble GPS, ready to go straight away on the laser bucket. Yeah, are you going to put the jewels on 1050? No. No, it won't be. It'll be on singles, fat singles. Yeah, yeah. So. Are they, will they be both pulling like the same size bucket or are they different size buckets? Or? Uh, different application. This one will be on a scraper bowl. The other one will be on a laser bucket, actually polishing paddocks. Oh, right. Yep, so this irrigation. one will be doing like more heavy duty kind this of be, pulling? Yeah, digging out clay, cutting channels. Whereas the other one will be just kind of doing the, the fine tuning afterwards? topsoil pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's all it'll be doing. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
and then Alan seed drill over here. We run five of them. Are these primarily for grass? Yep. We sow cereal with them as well. They're on five inch spacings. Um, so this one, it's been in here a while. This was a bit of a winter job that's just got to be finished off. So re-bush and maintenance. They're very high maintenance, the dish drills. So, All right, uh, okay. But a fantastic machine made in New Zealand. Yeah. So, um, There's not really much machinery made in Australia, is there? Very, very little. The new chaser bin you have is probably the only thing I've seen that's made cool. in Australia. Yep. Um, there's the chase bin and other than that, not much we have is Australian made. Yeah, yeah. Really, so. Yeah. And is it just that the stuff isn't made here or is it too expensive or what? The, the machines aren't really made here. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's certain things that are, but there's not a lot of our choices to have that stuff, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, there, is there any silage trailers made in Australia? I don't know of a solid trailer that's yeah, made in yeah. Australia. Because someone so, did ask about like what's with the Smith trailers and that, and is there nothing local equivalent? But there isn't really, is there? There's nothing at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we started bringing in the Smith trailers, it was everyone used trucks in paddocks or lorries. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, the Richard Western and the Stewarts have kind of dealers over here, don't they? Or distributors? They do, they have dealers. Yeah. So they're popular enough with other contractors, yeah, are they? They are, they're popular enough. Um, and the dealers are very good, good to work with, but we've got a great relationship with Sam Smith. Yeah. Um, we're probably the first ones to bring them in here um, and we've just continued that on. Uh, and they're a fairly heavy duty trailer, that's what you need behind uh, a 70k fast track out here. Like. Yeah, I think they're class, to be honest, they look the best and the class, but the Richard Weston, they've been great to us as well and yeah, the Stewarts, yeah. we couldn't get our Smith trailers in time due to COVID and things like that, so uh, getting the Stewarts has, you know, they've saved us, so you know, yeah, I haven't yeah. got a bad word to say about the Stewart trailer either. Yeah, and it worked out well that they had a grain hatch since you bought combines yeah, since. Yeah, well, we uh, we didn't have combines until this year and we ended up buying three of them. So yeah, yeah. those trailers are off drawing grain at the moment. So, so that worked five, out. There's five trailers drawing grain Yeah. at the moment, which has worked out good. It extends the season and keeps staff Yeah, full time. yeah. And more combines to come next year. Ah, uh, we'll see. Uh, like what's involved with putting on the jewels? Is it just to go off your wheel nuts, put on your space or and then both are back together. Actually, look, we'll give you a look around it. There's no we point. Have, we'll take the close-up tour. Yeah, actually, look, give you your spacers and stuff in there. There's dual spacers to get them, get your whip out right. Same with her back, you have a spacer at the back. It's pretty, pretty plain, bowled up, not too bad. You look in through here, Keen, you'll see, straight through into your wheels there. With your hubs, so there's no real trouble. Um, just torque them up and hope for the best. Are you staying on the 1050 when that's scraping? I don't know, I don't think it, no. The last time I seen you, you were on 1050 with the strip till. I was, yeah. This tractor was probably baling, was it? This was on a baler. Um, this time of year, I kind of try and stay down around this area. Yeah. I'd be up north for maybe three months during the harvest, so I have a missus not down here, so I try and stay this side of the Yeah, the so this is, this is going up north the weekend or Monday, I think. You're, you're going to yeah. stay down here, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> you could get a phone call and be told we got up the road, so it wouldn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, the 1050, it's going on to a new bucket they bought this year. Yeah. Um, so we're waiting on that. There's a hitch ready for it. So we'll probably fit that today and get it ready to go on the road. How long does it take you to duel up this track now? A couple of hours? You're satisfied since this hey, morning, right? So bad. Yeah, probably five hours, yeah. 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 Not too bad. Today, like, it's over 30 degrees, so it's sticky enough. So you're trying to keep in the cool in the shed. Going over and drink water for five minutes, <laughs> slowing you down, you're saying? Oh, like. It's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. But apart from that, yeah, it's handy enough. It's, if you have a good lad with you working like I had there today, it's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's not camera Luke, shy at Luke, all. Is Luke uh, supervising or working? Oh yeah, he, he's been here a while. <laughs> yeah, he's not camera shy, throw him on a second there. <laughs> so along here is just another parking area before stuff comes into the workshop. Um, as you can see, rakes, tedders, all to be washed and put away for the end of the season. Yeah, I, I haven't, I'd never seen the two coon mergers working when I was here. Are they kind of... Are they best to stay in the yard? All right, you're yeah. not a fan, no? No, not at all. Was that a bit of a regretful buy? Yeah, very regretful buy on the coon <laughs> mergers. Um, the class quadrota seems to be the pick of everything we've got, so... And was there something specific that them, they were bought for? The coon mergers were just for the... Our ground out here is very poached, like, if you uh, were in Europe, what, what we lift out here at times, you wouldn't lift over in Europe uh, because our cows are in the paddock so much, there's very few farms that house cows out here. But yeah, I did notice that paddocks can be rough, like, because cows yeah. root them up and then it goes rock hard. And Yeah, it does, it does. Um, but that's slowly changing, like, there's a lot of um, cows, dairy cows now. Um, yeah. Here on my farm, we're semi-housed, um, so through the winter we house them, but we only started that last year. 
Yeah. And there's more and more barns going up in northern Victoria, southern New South, and those ha- those cows are housed surrounded six five days a year. So did the coon mergers get any run out this year? Or? Uh, yeah, they do. In vet- they, they, I shouldn't. They're not a bad machine. It's just they don't work in our heavy cereals and you know, it's stuff that's doing seven eight ton per hectare. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. they can't handle the volume. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it, they, they're not a, the worst machine that's come out, um, but they don't suit what we do. There's too many times we could be chopping loose them one day. They work fantastic on that. The next day we're chopping cereal. Yeah. And they don't work. So it was a quadrotor rate just works all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and you it's just it? preference. <clears throat> There'd be people that would argue against us that the coon merge is a great thing, but we haven't had great success with them. Yeah. And then in rakes then you class is your choice really? Yeah, well we've got we got three coon quadrotors, um, and then we've got three class quadrotors. We'd have four, five twin rotor classes yeah um, and one twin rotor coon so we try and class class gear's good very very good yeah, in the yeah. green line stuff the rakes and the mowers and choppers and of course the choppers <laughs> that, that, that's well proven yeah 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 oh we'll have to talk about the chopper derby no <laughs> yeah. tell us what happened there this was what christmas eve christmas eve yeah you we decided you were going to line up all your choppers all you... of our choppers and um a mate of mine brought the 9900 John Deere. Lee contracting. And you even got back your original 890. Yep. That was the first chopper you ever... First chopper that I owned. So it's at a local farm not far from here. Uh, so I got it back just for the photo to make up the 10. But yeah, she, she, did, she did come last now, but look, we it, won't. It did. Maybe it was because I was driving it. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think my kids were driving it more so than me. Um, yeah, so we lined up those nine, as you've seen. And that was just a bit of fun. And How did John Deere get on? Oh, the John Deere, uh, he, he didn't quite keep up with the classes, let's say. So <laughs> You were happy uh, about that, weren't you? I was very, very excited about <laughs> that. Because um, there's been a lot of talk for the last nine months of this John Deere 9900. Yeah. I was slightly nervous. Um, and everyone said, oh, there's no need to be nervous. But you never know. It would have been embarrassing, wouldn't it, for the John Deere to win. Yeah, but he, he choked her on boat runs. So yeah. I don't know, do you blame the operator or the machine? But either way... Uh, it was a bad day for Lee Contracting. It was just a bad day for John Deere and Lee Contracting that day, but we'll go again next year. So, no, it was good and great bit of fun for the staff. Um, you know, they've had a massive season with us here. It was a, it was a bit of fun and that's what it was set out to be. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was... And it would have been a disappointing day if the class didn't win. Yes! Yes! John Deere, down where he belongs. Class is marching up. Look at this. What a great day. Jeff, this is this is the cultivation bay, and I've never yeah. seen a rake cultivating. What's going on there now? <laughs> well, some of the rakes are in here, my few, but I've overtaken the cultivation, so I have been here in the back. The is there no rake bay, no? <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm going to take it. Maybe that one there may be the rake bay. You what? After. Maybe that bay there may become the rake bay soon enough. Yeah, yeah. Someday you come in and that sign will be gone. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you up to? Just oh, just serving this rake. these rakes and going over them. Yeah, they're doing. A lot of hay there and stuff at the minute, so just making sure it's right and changed a few times and stuff like that. And mm. uh, yeah. actually, there's always something to be doing, anyways. Yeah, some of the route. You don't mind being in the workshop, no? No, I love it. I prefer to be. Well, I you like were you workshop. were welding one time yeah. before you came over here, weren't you? you yeah, were yeah. And engineering. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. Grassman was at hand before as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, I enjoy the old welding. Maybe not full time, full time, but I love. Dip, dipping the toe in and back out again, sort of thing. So. I'm sure plenty of it to be done around here now. There does be now, yeah, yeah. There <laughs> does be. So there is. Loving out handling every now and again. Yeah, yeah, well yeah. <laughs> so tell us about this ute, this big Chevy. Yeah, it's a great ute. The Chevy, uh, when it's going, it's had its few issues, but hopefully we're past them at 255,000 k's on it. And what? So. She's like 600 horsepower or something crazy, is it? Or? Oh, I'm not sure exactly. It's a. Uh, 
6 or 6.7 litre. Yeah. Can't actually tell you. Um, with a Duramax motor in it, 10 speed auto. Um, and it's loud. And yeah, it's got a fair crackle to it. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, this is the feeding area. We put this in, I brought this farm in 2019 um, and we're slowly developing it. So this is a feed pad here, flood washers every day and they're fed here every morning and every night. Even if they're out grazing, they get a mix, as you can see in the feed troughs. Um, in the winter time, some times in the summer, just depending on the weather, they'll go across. So these kind of sheds with the plastic roof are common enough here in Australia? Yeah, yeah the, the, in this area there could be 30 farms that have probably set up with them. Yeah. And I reckon there's another 10 going in this year. We tend to do a lot of the earthworks for them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so they're just a wood chip base bed and every day it's ripped, just has a chisel plough, you could call it. Yeah. Go through and it's just a composting bed. Um, as you can see, it's dry as. Even in the winter time, with the plastic roof, our, we, we can be so cold down here. Um, we, we, a shed doesn't work. We have to have the plastic roof to get the UV into the actual shed. Oh, yes, yes. And that, so, killed, that kills the bacteria as well. Yeah, yeah. And how often then is it fully cleaned out? Uh, it just depends how heavy your stock. This is built for about 900 cows. We continuously have a thousand in it yeah, all yeah. the time and we're not having any trouble. But this is our only the first year of the bedding. So um, I'm hoping that we get three years out of it, but it wouldn't worry us if we had to pull it out after two. Yeah, yeah. So. so this dairy farm, which is really only a bit of like a hobby for you, because uh. there's so much other stuff going on, like it has a thousand cows. Yeah. But even by Australian standards, that's a big dairy herd, like, is it? Uh, yeah, that's getting up there. Like it's above average? Yeah, it'd be above average. Six, seven hundred would probably be average. Yeah. Um, but oh, look, I love the dairy side. Uh, I am very busy on the contracting, but I've got good staff here at the dairy. And the dairy started off as a very small thing with my family. Yeah. Um, and then obviously I've grown it since 2019. So when, when you took over, like how big was the herd then? Ah, uh, we're milking 220 cows. 220, so it's gone from 220 to 1,000 in four years, yeah. I'll say? Yeah, yeah, in 2019 I brought my first farm. Yeah. And then I've, uh, yeah, brought around and yeah, joined it all up, I suppose, and to the, to the family farm, which yeah, was yeah. very small. It was only 300 acres. Yeah. So we've got 2,400 acres here now. All in one block? All in the one block, yep. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, and yet we've got plans to keep growing the cow numbers, you know, to utilise the amount of land that's here. So. Yeah, so I've seen the grader down earlier on, yep. uh, working a bit of land, that's yep. land just you've just bought. That. We've just purchased that and setting that up as well for another dairy down there. Yeah, so he's putting in roadways and stuff roadways there. Roadways and, and drains and, yeah. So like, will, will that be part of this block or will there be a second herd or such down there or a second parlour down there? There's a second parlour there that we've brought with it. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, that's still to be decided. Yeah, we'll just yeah. pay that by ear. At this stage, just get this one finished and developed. As you see, the new pivots and that going up out the back. Yeah. Um, pretty much, yeah, we want to make it a full irrigation farm. Yeah, yeah. Um, with centre pivots. And what size of a parlour have you got here? A very small one for the amount of cows. So yeah. it's a 44 unit rotary. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. But the bottom farm's got a 50 unit on it, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And is there any plans for a bigger rotary here? Or? There definitely is, but um, yeah, we'll get this bit right and then we'll look into that sort of thing. So. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Cross that bridge when you come to it, like? Yeah, when, when we have to, I suppose, <laughs> when, when that one's too old, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, look, we, we run plenty of staff, so if you milk of a morning, you don't milk of an evening and things like that. So oh, it's right, still, okay. still is quite enjoyable for them to be yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they also, they don't just milk, you know, they learn to do lots of other things. There's lots of farms where you can be and you milk just two milkings you might milk fast but you know you don't learn a lot of the other sides of the business and the farming aspect yeah yeah and dad's yeah. still very involved in the in the dairy side with me so and did your father ha do any contracting back no. in the day did the, you started the contracting he didn't yourself. know what machinery was yeah 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 yeah, so, yeah yeah very good cow man but yeah he didn't have any interest but once i started <coughs> he definitely worked with me for a couple of years probably three or four years there driving just round balers before it sort of grew further and further. The, the business name come about, and it was literally one tractor um, that was my parents, yeah. a Case 115, and then I brought a round baler, and I said to Dad, oh, I'll call it Monk and Son, and he said, oh, you don't need to put my name in it, we'll just call it Sam Monk or whatever. And uh, I said, no, I'm, that's what I'm having it as, and yeah, that was probably 14, 14 years ago, yeah, when yeah. I brought the first machine, 
and it was literally a tractor and a baler and yeah that's what i had and then when i went into bulk silage i went into loader wagons yeah yeah that's what i started with and then obviously that onto choppers and yeah then into the 890 still ran the wagons and yeah it just grew so um, there's lots of opinions how I got to here and I can tell you there's only one way we got to here and that's hard work and good staff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. This business is only made up of the staff it's got and we've got some very, very good people. Yeah, you like you have lads like Nigel there who's with you about nine years. Nigel's been with us nine years. Um, Billy, who manages the tractor side, he well he manages probably more than the tractor side now, I say the tractor side, but he uh, he's probably been here seven years. Yeah. Um, and then there's there's lots of others right behind them, you know, seven, six years, um, and who take a lot of responsibility for the business. And Yeah, are you at the stage now with your social media that you don't have to use like agencies or anything, that you can just put a post never, on Facebook? Never ever used agencies. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, posts on Facebook, but you know, there's, there's always posts on Facebook when you need them, but at the moment there's several people applying and that's great, you know. Yeah. At the moment we don't have many positions available, but coming to next season we'll have lots. Yeah. Last year I went to Ireland and toured around and interviewed a lot of the staff and that was fantastic. You yeah. knew who was coming. When they hopped off the plane, they knew who they were coming to meet and would definitely do that in future. That, um, yeah, that worked great. And I took uh, Tommy, who's one of our mechanics I mentioned before, he come with me um, for a bit of a holiday as well as to see some of his family over there. A but business, a, business trip. Business trip, we'll call it that. <laughs> um, but he's an Aussie guy, went to school with me and yeah, he's he looks after the, we're sort of in two separate uh, sections there with the Tommy looks after the choppers, um, Frenchy, our other main mechanic, he looks after the tractor side. So it's everyone's got their own area they look after and it seems to work quite well. So Billy, you're like a manager. Yeah. You so kind of organise the lads during silage and well, all year round this work. But. Yeah, all so year round, tractors sort of things and yeah. And I see you're on the maize plant for yourself there at one stage. Yeah, I do. I like doing that. maize plant down here. So yeah. I get it when I can. Good to get a bit of an escape from everything and yeah, yeah. you just don't manage to find the time you do yeah yeah yeah, yeah plenty of time. got plenty of good blokes helping so yeah it's easy enough to do but you're looking for mechanics for mechanics the workshop is the, the one thing we, we can't have enough of so. yeah. yeah always do with more mechanics and a lot of them like to have a bit of a go on machines as well and they they know how they work so if you get real busy they, they can jump on and give you a hand yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the, the quiet season, you need a couple more lads on the workshop for yeah, maintenance. Yeah, And, well, obviously the busy season as well. But. Busy as well, so. Ones that aren't, you know, is keen on driving machinery, but and know how to turn a spanner pretty good. Just to be able to service machines and just breakdowns, all, all hours sort of thing. So. Yeah, yeah. Trucks and tractors and implements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That diesel mechanic sort of thing is what we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're busy! Flat out! <laughs> yourself! Up the walls! Yeah. You look busy! <laughs> yeah, so you're on, you're driving a digger and you're doing this irrigation pivot job. Yeah, we're job. putting up a new pivot. So, it's a seven span pivot, I don't know how many acres is under it, but uh, this is where the, this is where the feed comes from. So, he's drilling holes in the feed pipe there now at the moment, and that's gonna feed the water through this line up the pump about I'd say eight or nine hundred meters down to the center of the pivot and then she goes around in the circle then and just uh, here he gets the land I suppose. Grass Have you all the pipe backfilled you right yesterday? Yeah yeah I've all finished just literally just after finishing backfilling that there now and um, come up here and I'm gonna give these boys a hand just lifting this out with the digger and try to get it out into the center of the into this pond and so you're just dropping <coughs> does that float yeah so just on top of the water or just under the water just behind where he's standing there you see the floats they, they all sit on top of the on top of this and yeah that just sits under the floats then so hopefully by tomorrow afternoon now we'll have uh we'll have water pumping it so. 